Okay, our first step in making a graph is going to be to highlight the data that we want to graph. You don't need to highlight the label because we're going to put those labels in ourselves later anyways. So I'm going to slide up to the tabs at the top and click Insert, and I'm going to add a chart. It's going to automatically default to a chart that we don't want, so we're just going to slide up to the top. I'm still up under the Setup tab. And I'm going to click on the drop-down box, and if you scroll almost to the bottom, you'll see that Scatter Chart is one of your choices. That's not really the right type of scatter chart though, so I'm just going to slide down all the way to the very bottom and click the bottom checkbox which says use column A as labels. So now I have time along my x-axis, I have my total distance along the vertical axis. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in the labels, but I know that I'm going to want to get rid of the title and you'll see the chart will naturally expand to fill that space. And so now we're going to look under the menus on the right under customize and we need to look at chart and axis titles. So under that heading, you have a drop-down box that gives you four choices. We're gonna skip all the title and subtitle and just go to horizontal axis where I can now type in time in seconds and I can drop down again, go to vertical axis and this one's going to say total distance in centimeters. Again, you can see the chart adjusted to that all right, and then that's basically it for that menu. If you want to change the um, themes or the background, the format, type of font, it really doesn't make a difference to me, but just bear in mind that you're writing this as a journal article, and so you want this to be um, to look very professional. So be careful of using things like script or, or anything like that. So the last thing then, the chart's really good. Data points are all in there. Everything looks right. All we need to do now is to put in a best fit line. In Excel, uh, they call it a trend line, and they also call it that in um, in Google Docs also. Now, before we put in the trend line, you have an option here if you wanted to make any adjustments to the data points, and I personally do feel like they're a little cartoonishly large. Even though it doesn't give me five as a choice, I can just type in whatever point size I want, and when I hit enter, you'll see the data points. They get a little bit smaller, a little more reasonable, a little less cartoonish, or, or a little less childlike. You can pick whatever you want for the shape of the data points. It doesn't really make a difference to me as long as it's something clear and, and I would be able to see it even with the trend line there. So if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the last option in this menu is trend line. So when I click on that one, it's gonna give me the choice of several options. So first of all, I can choose the type of trend line and you only have a few choices. So linear, which is definitely the best choice for this one, exponential, polynomial, logarithmic, power series or moving average. The only ones we'll ever use are linear, polynomial, or power series. That power series is really great because it takes care of anything that would be, for example, squared or square rooted, or maybe inverse possibly. It'll take care of all those situations for us. Occasionally we may use polynomial. There is one kinematic equation that is a polynomial, but then in a lot of cases, we'll be looking at something that forms a straight line. And so we'll choose linear. You obviously have choices about the colors that you can uh, use for the line. Sorry, go back to the trend line. Um, so I can choose the line color. I would stick with this thickness. I would not go thicker than this, but the opacity seems a little low to me. I usually change it to like 70 or 80%. I want the line to be very visible, but I don't want it to block out the data points. So that seems like a pretty reasonable um, way to do it. So then last thing to do is, all I need to do is I want to know what the equation of this line is. And so I'm going to go to labels and I'm going to use the equation and so now this says that the vertical axis is equal to 35 times x, x meaning the x-axis down here, plus the y-intercept, which is negative 6 times 10 to the minus third, or 0 0.006, negative 0 0.006. So the best fit line goes almost to the origin, but not quite. And the slope of that line, this is really important, the slope of the line is 35.9. In this graph, that means that the speed or the velocity of the battery-powered car was 35.9 centimeters per second because, again, the slope of this line is the velocity of the vehicle, in this case, in units of centimeters per second. So at this point, everything is there except one last thing, and that is you have a choice to show the R-squared value. And I'm not going to go into great detail about what the R-squared value, um, how it's calculated, but essentially the R-squared value tells you how good is the quality of your data. So the closer the number is to 1, the closer you are to perfection. Now, this data is not quite perfect, but it's close enough to 1 that they're saying that it is uh, that it is an R-squared value of 1. So the R-squared value will give you some idea as to whether your data is very good quality, meaning it's going to be like 0.99 or 0.98 or 0.95, something like that, or there's not as good a quality of the data. It might say 0.65 or 0.35, something like that.
So at this point, your graph is ready to go. So we're going to uh, right click on this, or actually let's do it this way. We can go to edit, and while it's highlighted, really important to notice that the blue line around the outside indicates that, the, the, that it's highlighted. I'm gonna go to edit, I'm going to copy it, and then I'm gonna go to my Google Doc. You can see I've already copied and pasted in my data table, and I called that figure one. I'm going to drop, come in here and drop down a line, and I'm going to hit Control V to paste that in, or I can also go to Edit and Paste. Okay, everything looks good there. All I need to do is drop down one line, and this one I will call Figure Two, period. Hit space twice, and then it's going to be Total Distance versus Time for a battery powered car uh, using a ticker timer. And that's it. Your graph is in and ready to go. Now you would do the same thing for each of the graphs that you're uh, working with. In this case, let's take a quick look at what would happen if you, what if I wanted this data? So I want velocity versus time. I'm going to follow the same thing, but I'm going to highlight this one first. I'm going to come over here. I'm holding down the control key when I click to highlight this, and that allows me to highlight two columns at the same time. So I'll highlight the first column, come over to the top of the next one, hold down the control key, and then use your mouse to click and drag down, and you should be able to highlight the two. And then you use the same process using insert. You can replace it with a chart. And then, of course, we're just going to make the changes that I showed you in that chart. And that's it.